Let's not, let's just not measure the dips. Let's measure its run-ups. Okay, let's measure its run-ups. Old all-time high, 2017, 20K. New all-time high, 69K. Ooh, a 3.5X in five years. 3.5X. My coin went up 10,000X in two years. Hello, and welcome back to The Daily Crypto. Bitcoin has been quite choppy, wavering in and out of the predicted support, and generally bearish sentiments are in the air, with inflation at record highs and the crypto markets as a whole not very buoyant as it stands. This makes us wonder, is 11k the bottom for Bitcoin, or will it fall even further? How do we stay ahead of inflation? Is the bear market ending soon? Keep watching to find out as we answer these questions with Richard Hart. Richard Hart the founder of Hexcoin on PulseChain, has made a number of predictions in the past that were spot on. For example, when everyone said Bitcoin was moving up to $100,000, Richard Hart, or RH for short, had a very different opinion. He said the flagship cryptocurrency was going down next, and it did. He mentioned some more of them. Watch. I said, don't try and short uh, the bear market. You'll get liquidated on Scamwick. These guys tried to short Luna. It went down 95%, like three or four times in two weeks. They still got liquidated anyway on Scamwix. They didn't listen. He also adds, I tell people not to hunt stupid yield when you can just sit and stable and wait. Don't make bad plays. Save your, save your powder till the bear market's over. No one fucking listens. They get liquidated in Anchor. They get liquidated in Luna. So what did RH find wrong in the traditional financial system that really ticked him off? I was reading Hacker News, a story about a guy who uh, did a Kickstarter and then mm -hmm. got screwed over because uh, Shopify wouldn't give him his money. Beg, plead, cry, please dear God, you know. Um, and so there's like website, paypalsocks.com. There's, you know, all these merchants of which I used to be one. You know, I've had people perform credit card fraud at my store. You don't get the money back and you don't get the nope. stuff back. So, you know, when you get a credit card approval, it means approval to get screwed. They can take that money back within 90 days. Well, yeah. that's no good. So <clears throat> cryptocurrency would remove the 1% to 3% rent-seeking tax that the credit card companies have basically burdened the economy with. It would remove, like, for instance, your bank doesn't have as good uptime as my product. Hex has had 100% perfect flawless operation for two and a half years. Your bank hasn't. Your bank's website goes down. The ATMs go down. You can't download your records for like longer than six months. You're like, hey, I need a record for seven months. Nope. Sorry. We just don't have it. You just don't have it. Like, I have yeah. to sue you for it. Like, is that what's up? I got to sue you guys yeah. to get my own records. Like, That's it's insane. Just, yeah. They close your account. Oh, you sent your money in the wrong place? Close your account. Oh, you want to send money for crypto? Some banks just say no. RH adds that even though it is our money in these banks, we still have never had less service, less hours, and even worse interest rates. Crypto solves some of these things now. It will solve more of them in the future. You just have to know that the price drops 85 or 95% every three or four years. And some things, they get down and they never get back up. Luna's yeah. not going to get back up. Rug pulls aren't getting back up. Things that have had inflation bugs have been hacked. Not getting back up. Some things have inflation bugs and survive, like Bitcoin said too. They rolled back the chain once, and then another time, you know, they just caught it before anyone used it. Luckily, Hex solves that. Yes. Like it's, I can't be any more right. My arms hurt from slapping myself on the back, and it's, you know, Hex went up 30x versus Bitcoin when it died the first time from 65k down to, uh, I don't know, 18 or something. The founder of Hex states that the mistakes most people make is that they measure from the top down. From the 2020 dip, Bitcoin went up 20 times from $3,800 to $69,000. Ethereum went from 88 bucks to $5,000. That's over 56 times. So RH indicates a 90% drop only cancels out 10 of those. That means everyone that got in early is still up massive. But all the people that just measure from top down, they don't understand volatility is a price you pay for the world's best performing asset. Currently, RH says everyone subjects themselves to counterparty risks, giving their coins to someone else, hoping they get more back later. Sometimes they get hacked, losing all their coins. Then they get bankrupted. 
but he claims that the coin he designed, Hex, will let you earn yield and you hold your own keys. He also claims Hex has a lower rate of inflation than Bitcoin ever had. Bitcoin's run-up to $20,000 was with an inflation of about 3.89, although now it is about half of that. RH mentions that the best time to buy Bitcoin was in its budding stage, when Satoshi owned 100% of the coins, and it was listed on only one exchange in the world, which was in Japan, plus its inflation rate was the highest. He gives his analysis on the craze for decentralization. I gotta, let, I gotta do a lot of de-educating people of the stupid things that they think, oh, like, oh, here's another one. No, oh, decentralization's awesome. I'm like, okay, well, let's analyze that. Okay. Is, is decentralization awesome in the network nodes? Yes, because it allows for censorship resistance, which is the only really useful thing blockchains do. Is it useful in the ownership structure? Nope. What do you mean? Well, I mean, 42% of Bitcoin, which went up 690 million percent from a penny to 69K, uh, it sits in 2,000 wallets, 2,130 wallets the last time I checked. Yeah, 42% of Bitcoin sits in 2,132 wallets. Wow. Price went up 690 million percent. You look at any ERC-20s, many of which have outperformed Bitcoin, Hex, for instance, BNB, they're more centralized and they have better price performance. And so I point out these obvious facts to people <laughs> and, and their brains are like, what? But, but I thought, Decentralization was the best, yes, in the nodes, but not in the ownership structure, because wrecked plebs that bought the top have to sell to pay their rent. And wrecked plebs that got loans and didn't understand that those loans were actually sales, the loans, when they get liquidated, oh that's a sale. Oh, 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 I have to get liquidated now because the price went down. Oh, so I'm selling lower now. Oh, I didn't want to sell lower. Oh, I screwed up. I shouldn't have got the loan. Idiots. So could it be that a lack of financial education has resulted in many of these mistakes? Richard Hart claims he mined Bitcoin at 50 cents. I mean, look, I mined Bitcoin at 50 cents. I uh, bought Bitcoin at 30. Yeah, I made the $30 top along with some other people. And then I held it down to Whoa. two, went down 93%. Then it went up to 1300, then it went down to 200, then it went up to 20,000, then it went down to 3000, then it went up to 14. Then it went down to 3,800. Then it went to 65. Then it went to 30. Then it went to 69. Now it's at 20. RH filled into the top with Bitcoin before it went down 93%. Statistically, he continues, we are most likely to hear about these things after they have had a huge run-up because that is what makes the headlines. Now that one finds out after the huge run-up, the only opportunity left is to buy it during the huge run-up. Everyone buys at the top. Once everyone has bought, all they can do now is sell, and then the price dumps. And you get this oscillation, and things that have product market fit will oscillate higher and higher. So like Hex dipped, you know, 65%, like 10 times on its way up 10,000 X in two years. In a normal Bitcoin bull run, you would never violate a 40% drop. Do we buy Bitcoin when it is down some 90-something percent? RH states that he bought the top many years ago and got wrecked at the 93% dip. Why did RH stick with Bitcoin after so much loss? RH says he decided to just hold it after incurring so much loss. After all, there was no point in selling it. The only time there's a point is when you buy something really weird. So like if you bought Luna and it has like a death spiral function built in that the lower the price goes, the higher the supply goes, then you have compounding death, you have death squared, you have price went down plus there's more supply plus price goes down more plus the, the death spiral coins are weird and they suck. So like rebasing coins, and Luna are two examples of like, you would have been smart to sell 95% down. For most coins, Dogecoin for example, if you had sold at 95% down, RH points out, that would mean you have messed up since it usually goes back up at some point. Hard to say why, but it has got product market fit, so it does go up sometimes. Could it be that we are really extremely early with Bitcoin? RH weighs in on this. Bitcoin's 13 years old. Yeah. It's old. People it's don't realize that in technology terms, 13 years is a long time. Bitcoin's probably found the top of its S-curve. Bitcoin probably has weak gains for the rest of its existence. What does RH mean by weak gains? Huh, let me tell you how weak the gains are. Five okay. years ago, Bitcoin was more expensive than it is now. How them gains looking? How them gains looking? 
Five years ago, Bitcoin was 20K. Today, Bitcoin's 20K. It was 17K like a couple weeks ago. Oh, well, how much did it run up? Okay, well, let's not, let's just not measure the dips. Let's measure its run ups. Okay, let's measure its run ups. Old all time high, 2017, 20K. New all time high, 69K. Ooh, a 3.5X in five years. 3.5X. My coin went up 10,000X in two years. What good things are they adding to the roadmap? Nothing, RH argues. The only feature, the only publicly facing useful feature they've added is a 40% throughput increase five years ago. What does RH think concerning inflation? I, I hear people in chat like, this bear market news is scaring out the weekends. Hey guys, let's do a thought experiment, ready? Ooh. If you wanted the price to pump really hard on an asset and you knew there were some people that were gonna sell, would you rather they sell lower or higher? Well, if they sell lower, they've lost their right to hurt the price later. And so if the person that they sell to has a longer time horizon, or is more likely to stake, or is more likely to stake for longer, or is such a whale, this is all a game to them anyway, they might not ever need to sell anyway, like Satoshi's never sold, at least not publicly. Um, you know, if someone wants to sell the bottom and, and you know, hand their bag to someone that's better than they are, I think that's good for prices of things. So if a guy could have sold 20 times higher, so 95% drop is a 20x difference. So it takes 20x to make up a 95% drop. It takes 10x to make up a 90% drop. If someone wants to sell a 95% dump for pennies on the dollar, historically, products with product market fit, I mean, look, Amazon dropped 95% once. And after that, yeah. it just basically went up forever. RH concludes with this. Don't try and chase bad deals in a bear market. Just chill in the less risky stuff and wait for the home run. Everyone gets liquidated in the Anchor Protocol, UST, Luna. You're just like, hey, you know, guys, uh, here's the proof of me telling you how to save yourself. You're wrecked. I'm living the dream. You know, it's just like, I don't know what else I can do to help, man. Thanks for watching this video. What do you think of Hart's position on Bitcoin? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you on the next one. Until then, bye.